This meeting is being recorded. Welcome to the August 20th Jail and Zones production user call. We have Dan, Nick, Eva, and myself, Michael, and there are upcoming events. EuroBSDCon is in Dublin, and the OpenZFS User and Developer Summit will be in Portland, Oregon. I'm very happy that we have two other Portland area people on the call today. So let's see. Uh, Jan has two open reviews. Jamie, if you're listening, take a peek at those. He's been refining those and going from, say, a PR to a review. From, based on nudging from this crowd. And Eva, it sounds like you have been looking at VPP and have a test harness. Are you ready to talk about that? Sure, I can awesome. go over some of that. So, all right, so I've been pretty excited about getting VPP up and running and uh, specifically in jails as well as uh, virtual machines. But since I'm setting up this new system that is, let's see if I can, Share this, I'm not sure the screen, but so take the blur background off. Okay, so right here ooh, ooh, ooh. is the two use system that has just get these DIN rail things out of the way. I'll stop the share so one can celebrate. And then in the back of this one, we have a bunch of network ports. So there's it's not much light. Anyway, there's a, an Intel X710 uh, four port. And then we have uh, Intel i226, which is four ports of 2.5 gigs. And then a uh, sort of odd one out there, which is the i350 uh, SFP style for quad one port. So this is just all the Intel stuff that's, well, not all of it, but a lot of the common Intel hardware that you, you'll see on. That's, a lot that's of good coverage. That one. Yeah. Um, I, I do have other more substantial network cards in the data center, but this is at my house. So, um, all right, so that'll be running a bunch of jails and uh, virtual machines that will be functioning for load generation purposes. And the load generator is going to have um, a certain number of those uh, ports, depending on each test that's being used to direct pass through to a virtual machine running uh, Cisco T-Rex. Oh, yes. Um, so yes. Rex will have, hey, we're all familiar with that for the most part, I guess. Um, I only bumped so, into it recent, recently and thought, okay, why is this not discussed more? And if you have any resources about that, maybe, or even enlighten the group, show of hands, who's heard of T-Rex and who hasn't, Dan, Nick? Yeah, okay, shaking head. Uh, can you describe that briefly? Sure. So this kind of goes back a, a ways now. Um, Cisco made this as an open source project at least over a decade ago. And to my understanding, it was created in response to some of the existing industry players that, that make load generators. And most of those are extremely expensive and have proprietary software and yet use kind of standard uh, enterprise grade hardware. And so a lot of organizations just don't want to spend money like, and I mean, like hundreds of thousands of dollars for sure. some of these systems. People don't want to spend that much to do load generation, pretty simple. So uh, Cisco made that and then open sourced it and they run it on a bunch of their hardware. They you know, source it out to customers, they use it internally and so forth. Um, and I've been using it at, uh, specifically at um, my most recent position for, gosh, it's, uh, it was the cornerstone of the, the test infrastructure. And uh, so I've used that on all of the present um, Intel production NICs, all of the Mellanox ones, some Chelsea, um, what have you, uh, Netronome, Silicon. Pretty much you can name most of the big ones, and I've probably had my hands on them. So uh, it's a great product. It, uh, it by default just runs in the terminal, it can be heavily scripted, it has its own template. Um, sort of syntax and leverages Python for more involved scripting. Uh, let's see. Oh, another thing that's very nice is that it has a custom library for Napatex SmartNix and have one of those floating around here as well. It's a four, four port 10 gig. What's and, the brand? Uh, uh, Napatex. Napatex. I confess yeah, I haven't so heard of that. They're kind of like 
cool. operating in the background quite a bit um, during the same time period. They they had the first 10 gig um, effectively smart NIC before smart NIC was a marketing term. And um, this is, goes back into the, the early 2000s that Napa Tech had that technology and you know, it cost insane amounts of money. Anyway, um, Napa Tech has a driver plugin for T-Rex and that allows the FPGA on board to offload a substantial amount of the load test resource requirements. And it allows the NIC to operate at full line rate and with almost you know, basically as low of a latency profile as one could expect to get out of modern hardware. And even more so than Mellanox or, or Intel. And that's mostly just by design. I you know they're, they're focused on specific use cases and load testing and um, uh, packet capture and replay are their focuses for these NICs. So you'll see it a lot on, well, I, I can go on and on, on and on about this stuff. But in any case, um, once I do the test harness for the jails using the, the Intel NICs, I'll move over to the Navitech one and um, see how that performs as a comparison. You know, get the, the hardware profile and um, start grabbing analytics. And then as a part of all of this, we'll get BPP set up in different configurations and load test it and hopefully have a nice base to compare everything that comes afterwards. And uh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and also I, uh, share some of the T-Rex configurations as they evolve. So starting right there, I don't see T-Rex in ports. Is it an easy install? It's, um yeah, it's fairly simple. Uh, it runs with DPDK, okay. so that's a component that's required. Okay. I'll go over that as well in the documentation that I'll be writing. Oh, fantastic! Because I've you know a a simple, regardless of if you produce it or not or find it otherwise, but a simple crash course on how to get started with DPDK and T Rex would be awesome because I I occasionally bump into them and it's a bit like FIO workload generation. It's a workload generator, but there are a few workloads and uh, just sort of random examples of how to use it, where I think that can all be a lot more structured, like you're describing. Um, yeah, have you absolutely. used awesome? Have you used any of the Intel FPGA NICs? Uh, I've used uh, one of them a couple of years ago in a corporate context. Cool. And I do not have one presently on hand, but I could probably get one on eBay. I, that's where I've seen them, and I thought, "What the heck is this?" And it it opens up that you know whole question. So thank you for being our resident expert. And I guess finally, um, how is the quad port Intel seven ten treating you? I've just had someone propose that, and also I've heard that two point five gig support is maybe bumpy on USB interfaces, but good on NICs. Can you characterize that for the nice audience? Sure. So the X710 chipset has been around for quite some time now. It's had a number of revisions and the driver uh, for FreeBSD is, in my opinion, extremely stable. Oh, great um, to hear. Yeah. Uh, as long as one <laughs> ensures that the hardware that they have is real Intel and not a clone from a random Chinese factory, which Interesting. is very prevalent. Oh, good so, to know. okay. Yeah, it's it's probably one of the most commonly duplicated cards that I've seen in and out of production. So there's a couple companies that are licensed to do that. Um, as far as I'm aware, 10G Tech, and um, I'll have to find the other one. But in any case, sure. wow. Uh, yeah, so uh, the one that's in here is a regular Intel, and then I have a, the 10 G Tech in another system. Uh, they have both performed effectively the same, um, but you can even look at them, and they they have specific differences that are identifiable. They appear the same to the OS; it's mm -hmm. not uh, recognized as any difference. Uh, as far as performance, again, they're they're very stable and. Uh, they do what you expect out of a out of a ten gig card. However, okay. they do run very hot. They're like 
very, very, very um, thermally productive. <laughs> very, very nice yeah. way of putting it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Does one need to watch for a newer version of the chipset, like avoid older cards and focus on newer, or are they all finally stabilized? So the 710 is about as mature as it will get. And I believe Intel, so Intel is still making them, to my understanding. Okay. Uh, they've also moved on to the um, the 800 series. And so you can go and find, it's like uh, the X, X810, I think is what they're on right now for the, the revisions. Um, I haven't uh, used that in anything other than the Intel itself. Um, okay. So I haven't seen any clones. I know that uh, Silicon has some variations on it and they, they're an interesting Nick production uh, kind of place that's, uh, they focus a lot on the financial world. So they have a lot of uh, NPUs and uh, DPU functionality and traffic directors, content uh, managers. And that's uh, Silicon? They're kind of Silicon, yeah, Okay. exactly. Got it. Yeah, they have some some fun stuff. Um, I'll paste a link into the agenda. Awesome. You, you are a wealth of information and welcome, Chris. Um, definitely keep us posted. That is both comforting insofar as I, there were times the X710 was just bumpy. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I sure hope those Intel mezzanine cards are genuine Intel, uh, Dell mezzanine cards are because uh, I've sure seen complaints and from D message, et cetera. So yeah. very good. I do have some Dell, uh, yeah, the, the RNDC cards that Dell makes. Mm -hmm. uh, have those in some uh, R630s in the hmm. photo. Okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, those have at the moment been running all on Linux systems, but I'm about to switch three of those nodes over to FreeBSD. Oh, cool. So okay. I can, I can get you some uh, some personal experience notes on them in a little bit. Sweet. Yeah. Any questions for Eva? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, maybe they'll come up. And Chris, welcome. Uh, hey, Michael. How you doing? Good, and yourself? Do you yeah. have any topics? We've been going through Eva's uh, test testing plan for VPP. Uh, if Jamie has a chance, and if you have a chance, hey, Jan's got some reviews, and of course, there are events coming up. It sounds like you'll have a few things at your OBSD con. Um, but any other topics, Chris? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, there's uh, an enterprise working group call happening tomorrow, I think. Correct. Actually, about put the 9 a.m. Pacific. The, um, I think so. Hold on a second. I'm going to put Sounds the right. link on top of oh, your good. rating. Wednesday. Here we go. Oh, Wednesday. No, Wednesday. Cool. Um, oh, no. And I will copy that and drop it in chat for those who aren't really paying attention to the doc. Uh, do you know if the if the schedules uh, the the uh, what's the word I'm looking for the I guess schedule or topics are established? Are they looking for content? They are actually. I saw the preliminary draft for the status slide deck that basically goes through the usual suspects, okay. um, the, the usual work streams. Um, I just voiced my opinion on the current status in terms of Beehive with the different, let's say, um, focal points in terms of, um, live migration and, uh, state handling. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, uh, I think that's, that's what I know at the moment. Actually, I have to admit, uh, your BSD con has been keeping me busy, at least the preparation work. And um, I <laughs> have not really spent a whole lot of energy on being up to date, I have to admit. No worries. Uh, do note that Hoster showed up. Not, I'm sorry, we're getting into Beehive topics, but uh, uh, Hoster seems to be yet another management contraption. So if, if you're doing a survey, 
uh, take a all right i have not heard about that no and of course clonos came up just last week i've you know little sketches on my to-do list here <laughs> uh and uh do you want to market your uh tutorials and talks to this group and the listeners well we're um i'm gonna be holding one half day session on an intro on beehive then a second session on half day on uh, jailing beehive and how to run and do that and then i've got a full day session on setting up a free bsd email server with uh, spam filter and virus filter and webmail and you know all the batteries included kitchen sink thing very cool thank you ah I I am ah why do they put the tutorials during the Jetson? Okay. Uh Chris, anything else? That's really it for the moment, okay. I think. And I trust all are invited to the EWG call. Yes, absolutely. Cool. Um I Good think the link is even on the mailing list as well. Hold on. Oh, cool. Good. Yeah, at well at first it had some sort of, uh, it took baby steps to just kind of figure out the announcement structure, I suppose. Uh, and agenda is the word I was looking for earlier. So great, uh, the draft agenda there. Cool. Um, I will just throw these out there because it's my fresh topic from like late last night, early this morning. Uh, to whom it may concern, if you are working with package base, I would love to talk to you. I found that if I set up a a new boot environment in this case, or could be a jail on a 14.1 host. I got a 14.0 target environment. And I have this terrible sinking feeling that the ABI is a two digit number because in general, a free BSD ABI is like per major release. And so I will experiment with adding a dot one, but uh, that was unexpected. There are various ways to query for that, but I'm still not clear how to get just ABI variable that is used throughout the script. So what is it? Uh, just, I'll just throw in the question. How does one get, unless I have it there somewhere, mentioned, uh, mentioned everywhere. So anyway, I will keep at it because that's quite cool. And I hope that the makefs, make image tools will eventually allow us to have a release engineering package base VM image, because that will just flip system deployment on its head. So I'm excited about it. Uh, any questions I slightly might be able to answer because, hey, I'm learning this as I go. And ooh, ooh, if you don't know about package prime list on FreeBSD, that shows you the primary packages without mentioning dependencies, which can be very helpful for just saying, hey, what really matters on the system? And here's some sim syntax that's not super easy to remember, but you can list on, say, your old lap system and punch that list into package, pointing at a new system. And if it knows the ABI, it'll build like a 15 system on a 14 host with your list of packages and generally resolve everything for you, which is very, very cool. But I'm pumping it into XRGs, which is not the most elegant thing. I'd hope you can just do package prime list and pipe it into package install. And there are examples of that on the forums, but they all seem to be wrong. So... There, I said it. Um, any other topics or questions now that I have that off my chest? I will hopefully get the Thursday Beehive call up today. Hans gave a demo of TPM emulation. That's a little off topic here, but oh, that was cool and that was quick. So he has some architectural decisions to make and is, is looking for feedback and we'll post a review, but uh, he has results. I love it. Um, Eva, I can't wait to hear more about VPP. And Chris and Dan, I will see you in Dublin. I finally have a ticket, believe it or not. And Nick, let's get coffee someday. Um, other topics, questions, concerns, funny jokes? If not, I'm tempted to call it at 25 after because, hey, those were some good points and we were missing a few folks. 
Uh, do, 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 time UTC is going once, going twice. Oh, Chris, let her rip. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have not said that in a while. Hey, that's why I thought I'd give you the honors. <laughs> well, take care. Hopefully see you tomorrow on the EWG call and the Open ZFS call.